Master Chef Arlen. Follow their journey on Facebook and Twitter. Today, the final nine MasterChef contestants are in Brook Lodge, County Wicklow, and have the massive challenge of feeding 300 hungry John Murray Show walkers. The hordes of ramblers are on the way, and the contestants are finding themselves well outside their comfort zone. There's 300 people coming in for lunch. So if everything weren't really well, you're going to get 30 people to each pass every 30 minutes. So that means you have to get this plated up in one minute in order to stop the queue yeah. from building up, all right? I think now that we're getting closer and closer to service, what I'm worried about is plating everything up absolutely precisely, making sure everything looks beautiful. We've put an awful lot of effort into making this meal. A bit nervous. No, we're not nervous, Shane. We're very confident. No, it's good to have a bit of an edge. <laughs> <laughs> confident, but nervous. I think they're nervous about the burnt roasties. No, it isn't. No, no. I'll talk Regina. <laughs> Unlike the other two teams who have already cooked their meat, the fish team are cooking their fish fillets to order. Pierce has decided to bear the brunt of the pressure and stay in the kitchen cooking. His attention to detail will be vital. Pierce has actually has to concentrate completely on his pans and making sure his vegetables are cooked enough, seasoned enough, and uh, ready to go, actually. It's a massive pressure on our team. I think when you look at the other dishes, you know, I shouldn't say carvery style, but their, their joints of meat are cooked in advance and, you know, they had all their veg done just sitting there at the pass for, you know, 20 minutes before service. As the walkers arrive into Brook Hall, the queues for the three dishes quickly fill up. We put a little bit of veg on. That much? Yeah. Hi there, how are you guys? Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Copa's air-dried ham that's made in the grounds. And Connell crisped it up for you. I did. Talk, 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 talk. Pretty hectic. We didn't realise that they come in pretty much all at once. And once all the tables were filled, they were going outside. It just was like a stream of people. Kept, they kept coming. There's a bit of butter in it, but sure, you preserved it. What we have here is some roasted uh, root vegetables, and it has a smoked onion, um, which is gorgeous with our beef today. Even selling our dish and, you know, telling them what we cooked and what was in our ingredients, I loved that element of it. And, you know, I worked really hard at that out front because I thought that was what was really important to get across to people. Glad that it's nice and quiet in here. There's nobody bumping off me at the moment. So, I need to keep my head focused. Pierce, you're about to get a little bit more busier, buddy. Sorry? You want to get more busier, huh? Shane, when you're ready, hand back that uh, beef tray, and I have some more slices ready for you here. As well as concentrating on the meat and trying to cook the different uh, medium, medium well, uh, well done for whatever the customers want, i got to have in my mind that I have veg in the oven and keep flashing in and out, trying to keep both stocked. A few potatoes, do you? Yeah. Did you get some? Are they in the oven? They're in the, no, they're in the bottom compartment of the, of the orange thing. If it's selling well and we forget to get more uh, food into the oven to heat, then we're going to keep people waiting. If people are waiting, they're just going to move to somebody else and get food from somebody else. We need to make sure there's a constant stream of food coming out, that the presentation is absolutely perfect, and that we're working and talking to each other all the time. If we stop communicating at this stage, we won't win, and we really want to win this. Taking their eye off the ball, the fish team realise they've run out of courgettes. And as their diners wait, they have to go back to basics and start shopping. Didn't prepare, pre prepare enough courgettes for 100 dishes. I didn't uh, cut the veggies, but I'm not saying it's not my responsibility. Of course it is, it's team responsibility. And as their customers wait at the pass, things go from bad to worse for an already overstretched Pierce. Guys, we need some fish out here now. Start talking to the girls more, they'll do a little bit more for you. Meanwhile, out in the dining room, the walkers that have been served are getting stuck into their much-anticipated lunch. However, are the standards high enough for a Brook Lodge audience? The rusty, tiny bit overcooked, but that's the only negative. The bisque certainly is the highlight. Um, I'm not sure about the little crab cake. It's a little bit on the dry side. Well, I had been in the steak uh, uh, line, but when I got so close, um, they have it done very rare. So I switched over to the hake. 
chose the pork because I think it was the one dish that was available at the time when you were standing in the queue. Big piece of crackling there. With a huge demand on the ovens and still over 150 people to feed, Pierce's order backlog is growing by the minute. Ovens opening and closing every two minutes, and um, and it's the, the Hague Kitchen cooking property because of that. So, uh, so I'm having, I can't, my timings are all off with the Hague. So I'm just going by feel now. Sorry? How's them? Um, how's the veg? No, more veg. You want everything? Not a problem, sir. Delighted here. Delighted. I'd say you are starving today. Hake, Hake, how are we on Hake? We need? Yep. Done? I think it needs a minute. Do we okay. really need that now? Yeah. She's out. She's out. And while the fish team are struggling to keep up with their waiting customers, Richard sees an opportunity in the even longer beef queue. Guys, you have to try the pork over here. You've been waiting ages for that beef, and it's definitely, definitely not as nice. This is organic pork, stuffed with fennel. It's got a lovely rub in it. It's slow roasted on a spit. It's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, it's all that's real. Absolutely great, thank you. Oh, okay. very master chef. <laughs> you gotta keep selling it to people. You gotta keep calling them over and make sure that they're coming in and seeing what you got. Fabulous pork with wild nettle potato cakes. I You'll go for that. You won't be disappointed. Harvey, come along there, Pierce. Fish. Fish, I've got fish here. Okay, guys, we need to get going in the beef here, guys. We just need to get going in the beef. Let's go easy in the sauce. That's, that's as much sauce as we have. Dylan and Nick have been keeping an eye on the contestants and feel that both Shane and Connell are not pushing themselves enough. So they've decided to switch their positions in the teams and move them from front of house. Some people were doing all of the work as usual, so it was important to try and flip that and see how they responded. You two are going to swap. Okay. Yeah? No problem. I want you two to swap roles. I want you to stand there and serve people, and I want you to do the backup. Yes. Let's rock and roll. Let's see a second speed, Shane, yeah? Okay. okay, Shane, there's a tray of rusty. There's one tray of veg in. Yeah. There's another tray of rusty cold. Yeah. So you need to get that right into the oven now. Don't worry about the meat. I'll start serving up here. Richard. Pardon? About that? Uh, you can do it like that, or else you can take it off and then slice it. So either, either way. Do you know what? We're just going to get some more um, rosties when you get a chance. Rosties will be there. Uh, give me three minutes for rosties. I don't have uh, three minutes. Right, okay. And as the judges have decided to take James away from the fish team, leaving Pierce in the kitchen on his own, he leaves the girls with strict instructions. Ladies, I've been told to leave now, so you really need to get it full there so he's not in the shit. Get more yep. potatoes out, get more veg out yep. so he's not in the shit. Three needs those potatoes. Yeah, I know. And Pierce is back chopping courgettes again. Keep running out of veg. I'm not getting the feeds. Huh? I'm not getting the feed. Oh, why? Yeah. But why don't you just do loads more veg? Um, this is how the chef asked me to do it in France. Do it your way, do it your way. You were stuck here sweating in yeah. the engine room when the others are just sort of out the pass enjoying themselves. Uh, I don't think so, Mitch. Mean, there he's running around like a blue arse fly there as well, getting the potatoes and stuff. If we had cooked things in bigger batches, it would have been easier on us. Um, but I think the quality of the food probably would have suffered as a result because fish doesn't taste good when it's been sitting around. As a team, we, we did exactly what we set out to do, but I think the judges probably felt that we made life difficult for ourselves. As Shane struggles to find his momentum on the prep area, the fish team have been asked by a celiac customer if they could have a fish dish without the crumb and potatoes. Pierce goes out to investigate, pan in hand. Um, we've just had one request for hate. Yes, what is that lady the allergic the to? She's Celia. Can you get some more sauce from me, please? And it's lovely beef sauce to come with this as well. I'm not annoyed to have to do this at all, you know. I suppose you always get special requests in, in kitchens, so this doesn't bother me at all. A couple of other elements of the service annoyed me a bit. Particularly not having enough veg prepared. It's just a little bit irritating. Pierce, do we have the celiac fish coming? Yeah, it's coming. How long will it be, though? It's. I'm, I've asked, it's, it's on the way. Five minutes? It's on the way from the other, yeah. Meanwhile, the other teams have finished their service. It's on its way. I won't forget you, I promise, promise. The fish is, uh, is beautiful. I was thinking long and hard about having the beef or the pork, but I decided the ultimate 
healthy day would be a big walk up and down the mountain and then some gorgeous fish. I thought it was three professional chefs competing. So, I mean, on that basis, the food was fabulous, assuming that they were professional at it. If they're amateur, I mean, it's just off the scale. Really, it was so good. I was on the beef. I, was on, I tried the fish. Excellent as well. And the, this is pork now, I guess. But I'd still go back to the beef. My beef is number one. The day has been a fantastic success. Good weather, good walk, good food, and good company. I'm sorry to wait. Enjoy your meal, OK? OK, thank you. Really proud today, really proud. So hopefully we're in it now to, to win it. <laughs> we wanted to let people know what was the best, and we did, at the top of our voices. We genuinely thought our food was the best, and we you know, made sure people knew about it. Nothing went wrong. Yeah. Nothing. To be able to cook dish, dishes to order like that, and for nothing to go wrong, is really impressive. The Hake team, there didn't seem to be any real... There was no communication. There was no communication, there was no leadership. You know, Mary's a grafter. I just wish she'd learn how to be a bit more verbal because she doesn't need to... She didn't need to do that much work. That was a lot easier than that. Mm. But she just had to... She relentlessly kept going and she just doesn't understand the power of communication yet. Yeah. But there again, Pierce didn't uh, communicate either. He should have explained, look, I'm under pressure here. We didn't do enough vegetables. Pierce should not have been left like that in the background. Laurent didn't move, but she's normally the one that, that does all the multitasking. She seemed to stay at the front. Oh, Richard was sweating so much. Today. Richard always sweats. Richard changes colour, <laughs> doesn't he? I love when he gets under pressure. He kind of goes pink. No, he goes pink, and then he goes red, and then he goes white, when he's really worried. Beef team. Beef team. Still seemed under pressure at times. I think it was a good move to swap the boys, because I, I just don't see Shane come out of his comfort zone enough, and it can be, it can be a little bit frustrating. He's quite willing to just rest on his laurels and stay there. With 300 walkers heading home well-fed, the top prize of cooking in a professional kitchen with some of the country's leading organic chefs is now up for grabs for the winning team. I've been to this restaurant before. The food that comes out of there is fantastic and I just love to get in there and, and cook in there tonight. It would be a great honor, yeah. This time, I think it went fairly well. Tried to step it up that gear, kept the focus on, did things with a sense of urgency. Well, when I win, um, I'm going to be very happy. <laughs> OK, guys, well done. Great service. A lot of uh, well-fed, happy ramblers out there going away today. Good job. And as you know, we have to find a winner that's going to be cooking in the strawberry tree tonight. So without a shadow of a doubt, the winning team that produced the best dish is... The pork. So well done. Thank you. Did it again. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Oh. Brilliant. Thank you. So commiserations to the rest of you, and we'll see you all tomorrow in the MasterChef kitchen. Thank you. We were disappointed that we didn't win. You know, we just didn't know, you know, where the other teams were or what they were doing because we were so focused on our own dish. I suppose I always think I'm going to win. I think that's the mentality that I try to have in this competition. And I think if you have that attitude, you're going to do the best you can. We had to sweat it out at the end and the others weren't as pressurised. That was a challenge for us. You know, when you've been working for over 12 hours and you haven't sat down, I think it's, it's very hard to, to not be a bit deflated when you haven't got brilliant feedback. It's just, it's tough to take. The Strawberry Tree produces a daily changing menu of exclusively wild and organic foods. Tonight, Richard will cook starters, Claire-Anne will be on mains, and Connell will prepare desserts. I've never um, filleted a wild salmon that costs 20 euros a kilo before, so it's pretty daunting to be um, doing this now. So you need to be really, really exacting with this dish. Everything needs to be absolutely perfect. Three berries on top, needs to sit perfectly on it. I'm gonna put a little bit of garnish. The main reason I entered MasterChef was to you know, do things exactly like this. Service, please. OK, service. Service and table four, please. Yes. Thank you. Well, guys, here's such an amazing day, and it was just fabulous working with you and winning.
Coming up in part three, the contestants' toughest test yet, and where Nick and Dylan separate the amateurs from the true contenders. I think there's every chance that I'm going home this evening. It's lucky I did well yesterday, or else I'd be going home. That's for sure.